No new wards has been placed for quite a bit. Um, there's a standard counter ward. I think this ward just got counter warded. It looks like uh, the Centone team really a brave in terms of uh, their advancement and uh, Scourge doing whatever they can to force them back. At this point, they, they're really not in position to do anything else other than to avoid ganks. The Hawk really helps out a lot in terms of that re aspect and they really need that Beast Mass, uh, not the Beast Mass, the Tinker to really farm up his BOT because without the BOT, the Tinker is really... Um, Unaffective. I mean, he's an early game nuker, and but other than that, without his BLT, he he can't map control all too well, and can't help out gank. Looks like this morphling has fallen down once again to nice ganks of the bottom and the tie hunter. So. Really, uh, the uh, the Sentinel team keeping up their the pressure. They do know that even though they do, I mean, I personally, I think that they have better late game. Um, they they don't want to, uh, you know, lose any pressure. It looks like there is a nice stun from the Windrunner, and then uh, just a follow up by the teammates, and they do pick up the Earthshaker. So nothing going right for the Scourge team at this moment, and they're really actively defending each and every tower as well. You can see that Windrunner deciding to not push and uh, goes back and defend instead so not willing to give up any towers uh, for, the, for, the Scourge, uh, for the Scourge team because giving up tower at this point really allows the Scourge team to come back and they don't want to do that. You can see very offensive wards and counter wards placed by the, Scourge, uh, by the Sentinel team uh, uh, you know, not allowing, not allowing the uh, Scourge to have any kind of map control and that's really how you want uh, to solidify your, your early game advantage. Looks like there is a, quite a bit of action. Potom diving in very bravely. Looks like Potom will fall down but meanwhile there is a gank on top lane. Tinker really in, in bad shape this moment he's gonna get cast and he's gonna get stomped blinked and that will be GG let's see if oh gank pick him another kill gank is actually dominating personally I don't like how he's uh, picking up two men in kill but with what which doctor it's really hard to avoid that because your maladeg is a very powerful spill and uh, I mean you really need and and your teammate has expended a lot of nukes to make your Maledic even stronger and stronger. So Witch Doctor does end up picking a lot of kills, but it will help him because he's already had treads. Um, he's still buying wards for his teammate, and he has like 1,800 gold. I'm looking forward to him for saving up for a Blink Dagger. If he has a Blink Dagger, it will really increase his ganking potential. And it looks like Merlini has placed another ward here. I think the Scourge team uh, doesn't know that they're being counter warded. Uh, okay, there is going to be a counter ward here. I'm looking forward for Witch Doctor when he has enough gold will counter this ward because I'm pretty sure they do know here. And uh, Merlin is doing a pretty good job in terms of counter warding department. Item wise, he still only has a boost of speed, no earns or anything else yet. But um, he's really relegated to a lot of the farm for his other player. It looks like BOT is on Rexar. So he's going to be really uh, helping out in terms of ganks. Now with BOT, he could counter gank sort of. But the, the thing about the Sentinel gang is that they have a lot of long range burst damage. And by long range burst damage, I mean the, the Blink Dagger, uh, Panda, the, the long range arrow of the bottom. So they can really come across uh, from uh, from across the map. It looks like this a Morphling. I'm, I'm not too sure I really like the Morphling play. This is like the third or fourth time I see him waveform in to get a one or two creep kills and then do a, a couple of damage. I mean, it's a really nice nuke and farm tactic. But um, <clears throat> it really like uh, it really uh, it, that's your only escape skill and Morphling doesn't have all too much HP. Uh, there's a lot of burst damage on the Sentinel team and I'm not sure whether using your escape skill to farm and harass like that is the best choice. Uh, looking for item progression, Tinker is a 1900 goal, so he's gonna pick up his BOT pretty quickly. Um, not fear, not close to his dagger. The, no, looks like the uh, the witch doctor has gone for a wizard staff of wizardry. Now this item is very versatile, so he could go into a lot of things. Let's see, he's gonna go and and beastmaster. Come on, micro your hawk, dude. I mean, if if I see beastmaster playing like that in a in a lower level game, I understand. But if you're playing on the Nirvana team, please, man, please. Looks like there is the. Uh, no, no uh, conversions going on bottom lane. I think the, the Scourge team putting a lot of pressure on this bottom tower, but 
Skirshim already there in respond uh, to respond to this push, and with Tinker in place, all those uh, rocket spam and marcher machine will be uh, pretty good in terms of defending this. And uh, that's a uh, illusion. I actually they actually baited a lot of spell. They baited a cast, a gush, a a maledic, and a clap. So I think this with with all those spell baited at this point, I think the skirt should turn back because with Shaktor's maledic has a very long cooldown. And with this Tinker's Marcher Machine throughout the way, and, and this is what I mean, and as, I think that's kind of uh, indicative of, of a, a support player playing a carry role. And despite of having everything, Tyhunter's ultimate is still on cooldown, and they do pick up a couple of kills, and uh, oh, Tyhunter will fall down, but uh, the Sentinel is still up ahead at this point. Ultimate pops on Panda, whoever TPing in will get a lot of trouble. Witch Doctor doing a good job, wow, nice Cyclone, quick finger Cyclone on the... On the uh, on the Earthshaker there, and they're gonna go for the Witch Doctor. I mean the Earthshaker. Earthshaker taking a bit of damage. There's gonna be a clap. No clap yet. Um, Panda low on mana. Can't clap just yet. That uh, Morphling a bit of danger. It looks like is there a nice stun from Windrunner? No nice stun. There's he's gonna wait for him free. No, but there's a hex on the Windrunner already. Nice farm by the Windrunner. Twenty something minute hex, and that's what you want from your solo Intel carry. The Sentinel definitely ahead and too busy microing your. Pig, micro damn hero, please. But with the nice viper pig slowing down. Oh, what are you doing, Beastmaster? What are you doing, Beastmaster? No, nice magic stick. I thought he was gonna fall down. And uh, this, this, uh, oh my god, this, this panda running quite low in in terms of HP, and that viper pig not not allowing him. It looks like it's it's Tinker. No, Tinker got stunned. And uh, let's see if there's a long range rocket that will catch everyone. He could. Initially, he could in theory pick up a couple kills, but it looks like everyone will be okay to get out. And a uh, windrunner thinking, uh, going in really bravely, he's gonna pick up the kill on the beastmaster. Beastmaster not having his day in terms of micromanagement, really failing at it several times. I either see him microing his hero and ignoring his hawk altogether, or the other way around, microing his hawk and not his hero. I mean, if you're a professional Dota player, I expect a lot more out of you. But um, besides my, my constant raging on the Beastmaster player, going back, Morphling has his Perseverance. Uh, go count wise, he's only at 900 something, not close to his uh, ultimate orb. Beastmaster picked up an Ogre Axe, I believe. Um, I don't think it's going to be an Agamemnon Scepter, so it's going to be a Sange and Yasha. Very strange item on this Beastmaster player. Going back on the Witch Doctor, still holding his uh, Staff of Wizardry. I was talking about that earlier. Now with the Staff of Wizardry, very versatile in intelligence item. You could go into a Force Staff, a Cyclone Stick, or an Agamemnon Scepter. I feel that Agamemnon Scepter is the best out of all three, but you know it's also like twice or three times ex ex as expensive as the other. A Force Staff wouldn't be all too bad. Um, given that he's really focusing on buying wards, this uh, this Tide Hunter haven't been buying anything all too much lately. Um, is sitting at 500 gold. Let's see if there's any item on the crow. There is gonna be a four staff on the on the uh, witch doctor. It looks like there is gonna engagement on the beastmaster. Long range arrow hits a tinker. I think they should focus on the tinker instead. Um, a kind of a bad follow up ulti stun from the Tide Hunter. Given that how much stun they already had and that ulti was kind of unnecessary, but regardless, they do pick up a kill. Now, with that ulti wasted, I think they should tread very carefully. But um, since they already killed two, you know, it isn't all too much of a big, big deal. They still have a hex on the Windrunner. Windrunner already level 16, so his ultimate is going to hurt all too much. Let's see if the Scourge Team, no, the Scourge Team will defend. I was going to say if the Scourge Team, let's see if they're going to go in and, and get for, get the Roshan, because they do have a fair, fair deal of map control. In fact, they could still get to Roshan because they have the Windrunner's ultimate and it looks like they are gonna there we go they are gonna go for the Roshan Potom already Manta style so his item progression is going on quite quite well it looks like this Windrunner look at his damage Roshan falling quite quickly and the Witch Doctor doing a great job get, providing heal and there's nothing the Scourge team could do at this moment Earthshaker not close to his dagger and they're really in trouble going back to some war placements real fast since not much action, I feel that this ward placed by Merlini is a bit um, kind of useless at this point. The runes is not too much important. Of course, it still gives you a nice sight in terms of the ganking area coming in from this way or uh, and this way. But I feel that a ward here would be a far more effective, or maybe even a ward here, a defensive ward to prevent movement coming up from this direction to gank the top uh, farmer. 
Meanwhile, this war on the bottom, I mean, again, this war was placed a while back, six minutes back. So um, talking about now isn't all too much. Again, it sees a very nice area, cross section of area. Um, so it's just giving you a lot of sight. This this bird has been uh, parked there for uh, quite a bit. And I mean, with with the bird, you have really nice free ward, and it really eases the pressure on your warder. But um, I mean, I haven't seen him migrating his bird all too much. So it looks like the Tide Hunter has picked up a Blink Dagger. So really, a Discourage team really in big trouble at this point. Um, Three or four heroes could, uh, from the Sentinel team could already blink in. Looks like the Aegis ended up on Alaria. I'm not sure whether that's the best, cho best choice. She is pretty much of a ga glass cannon, but I feel that, um, I mean, I guess so. Like, who else would you have it on, right? The bottom, I guess, don't really need it. Looks like they're going to power down this tower. Windrunner packing freaking 160 damage or so is going to pick up that tower. And they're just really having whatever they want. Finally, March picks up a, a tower, and uh, he is pretty close to his Lincoln Sphere. Yeah, a couple hundred more go, and he will have his Lincoln Sphere. With the Lincoln Sphere on the Morphling, he will be pretty much a big threat at this point, because with the Lincoln Sphere, he could really farm um, a lot more effectively. A nice kill on the bird there, uh, and Tinker doing whatever he can to to cancel daggers. 